Hi, everybody, and welcome to room nine. My name is Miss Fritz. Oh, well, my boys and girls, you know who I am? You're right, I'm Mrs. Brewer, but do you know who I'm dressed up as today for Halloween? That's right, I'm dressed up like Miss Frizzle. Where is Miss Frizzle from, boys and girls? You know what? You probably don't know because I don't have Liz, my lizard on my shoulder, and I'm kind of missing something pretty important. You're right, I'm missing my magic school bus. You're exactly right, boys and girls. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Mrs. Brewer, and I am a third grade teacher at Gordon Bush Elementary School in the East St. Louis School District. And boys and girls, this is our final math lesson before Halloween. So it could get pretty freaky up in here, boys and girls. What do you think? Maybe this little? All right. Um, so boys and girls, are you gonna be able to go out trick-or-treating this year? Oh, well, if you're still able to, that is awesome. This is definitely a year unlike any other. But if you're not, I'm sure you're still going to be able to get some good treats. And it's so fun to dress up, boys and girls, even if it is just around the house. Look at me. I'm dressed up in my backyard, and I'm having a blast. You know why? Because I'm here with you, boys and girls. You're exactly right. So today is actually the end of our fraction unit. So today is a special day, boys and girls. We're gonna be reviewing some of the topics we've covered in the past couple weeks, but we're gonna continue on our main focus with comparing fractions, okay? You ready to get started? Uh, I am totally ready to get started, okay, boys and girls? So since it is our freaky fraction finale today, you never know, boys and girls, what could happen around here. It's ready to get freaky. Never know who's ready for our freaky fraction finale, boys and girls. Are you ready? Uh, I am totally ready. All right, boys and girls, let's see what we have in store first. You ready? Oh, yeah. First, we are really going to get freaky because when we talk about comparing fractions, and this is why I said, boys and girls, we're going to do a little bit of review. We have to know the unit fraction, don't we, boys and girls? Because when we start comparing fractions, we really need to know what that unit fraction is going to look like. Who remembers what a unit fraction was? All? Some of you do, and that is awesome. Anytime we talk about the unit fraction, boys and girls, I am talking about how much each piece of our whole is worth. Not how much the whole is worth, but how much each singular piece is worth. And we know to be fractions, it has to be what? Each piece has to be, you are so right, boys and girls, it has to be equal, okay? So to be able to compare, we have to know the unit fraction. So let's see first if we can still identify the unit fraction, okay? Woo! So, boys and girls, if you look here at this whole, I want you to tell me what is my unit fraction of this shape, boys and girls? How much is each piece worth? You are so smart, boys and girls, if you told me that it is one fifth. I know that this piece here is worth how much? You're right, one-fifth. This piece here is worth how much? 
Uh, you're so right again. One fifth. This piece here. One fifth here. One fifth. You're exactly right, boys and girls. And here, this is also worth what? Uh, yeah. One fifth. I know each piece has to be worth one fifth because one fifth is our what? You're right. Our unit fraction. Good job. Good job. Let's try another one. All right. So let's look at this shape, boys and girls. What is my unit fraction for this shape? Now, notice I didn't say what fraction is shaded or what fraction is unshaded. I'm asking for the unit fraction. How much is each piece worth, boys and girls? You are super, super freaky smart if you said one fourth. Did anybody say one fourth? Uh, if you said one fourth, go ahead and do a little Frankenstein dance, a little monster mash here, okay? Good job, boys and girls, if you got that, okay? You ready for our next shape? Good, good. What is my unit fraction here of Frankenstein's fraction he has here? Good, boys and girls. What's our first step in finding this out? What do we have to do? You're right. I would start by counting how many pieces do we have, right? And what is one thing you notice so far about all of our unit fractions? You're right, they all have the same numerator, right? Why do you think they have the same numerator? Boys and girls, you must have really been paying attention. We know that they all have the same numerator because if I wanna know how much each piece is worth, I'm just talking about one piece for each of these, aren't I? You're right, we are. So anytime that we talk about our unit fraction, our numerator is always going to be what? One, right? And where does my numerator go when I write my fraction? Should I put it up top or does it go down? You're right, numerators go in the air, right? All right, boys and girls. So if we looked at this one, we know our numerator for the unit fraction is always going to be one. How much each piece, how much one piece is worth? You're right. So the numerator goes up top. And what's the name on the bottom? It is my, you're right, boys and girls, denominator. Kind of sounds like a Halloween word, doesn't it? Denominator. Right, but it's coming to get you. All right. And what does that tell me? You're exactly right too, boys and girls. It tells me how many pieces we have in all. You're right. So that's the first thing I would do. Count how many pieces I have. Here I have eight. I write that as my numerator, or I'm sorry, my denominator. That goes down there, right? Numerators go in the air. Denominators go down there, right? Okay. So that would be one, eight. Great job. You got that. Give me a fist bump. Ooh, a little freaky. This bump back there, right? Little eerie. All right, let's keep going, boys and girls. So now look here. I have a number line, right? And what do we see on my number line? You are exactly right. We have fractions. Why would I have fractions on a number line? Boys and girls, you must have paid attention to my very first lesson. You're exactly right. We have fractions on a number line because fractions are numbers, right? So we can put them on a number line. So here's my question. What is my unit fraction here on the number line? We can't have a unit fraction, right? So we said on a number line, we're just dividing between zero and one. So here, remember boys and girls, if I have 12, 12, we know that is equivalent 
or the same as what? You're right, one whole, okay? So I do have zero to one here, don't I, on my number line, okay? And yes, I can have a unit fraction because we divide it between zero and one into what? Into, right, equal pieces. So what would my unit fraction be here on this number line? Boys and girls, I want you to get up and do your favorite monster dance, monster mash dance, whatever you got for me. If you said one, twelve, do your thing. All right, boys and girls, you are exactly right. We have it divided up into twelve equal pieces. So since it's twelve equal pieces, that's our total number of pieces. My denominator becomes twelve. My numerator, we know, up top is one because we want to know how much each piece is worth. This is one twelfth here. This is one twelfth here, but it's one twelfth, two twelfths, right? Three twelfths. One twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth would be four twelfths. Good job, boys and girls. Now, the other thing we did was we worked on comparing fractions to what? You are right, boys and girls, to one half, okay? So look here. If we are comparing one half to one third, which do you think is greater? Do you think one half is greater? Lean towards one half. If you think one third is greater, lean towards one third. What do you think, boys and girls? Hit the bow one time. If you said that one half is greater than one third. Great job, boys and girls, if you got that. Go ahead and hit that wall if you got it. All right, good job, boys and girls. All right, what about here? What if we compare one half to three fourths? What do you think? If you think one half, is greater, lean towards one half. If you think three fourths is greater, lean towards three fourths. What do you think, boys and girls? Which way should I lean? You're right, boys and girls. We should be leaning towards three fourths. Trick job, right? Why three fourths? You're right. You can tell that more of my whole, more of that circle is shaded right so boys and girls if you ever have a question about what's greater or less than is it okay to draw a model absolutely just remember to keep those pieces equal okay one half you divide it into two pieces three fourths we know we have to divide it into four we would shade three of those halves so boys and girls we know that one half is less than three fourths Good job so far, boys and girls, good job. All right, now let's compare on my number line. Let's compare one half to seven twelfths, okay? So did you find one half on that top number line? Good, it's right here. Did you find seven twelfths? Good, it's down here, boys and girls. You said there, good job. So let's compare. Which is greater? If you think one half is greater, lean towards one half. If you think seven twelfths is greater, lean towards seven twelfths. What's the answer, boys and girls? Which is greater? I should see you leaning this way because one half is less than seven twelfths. So another way you can check to see if you're right, boys and girls, is put them on a number line. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with drawing a model or going to our number line, boys and girls. These are all strategies to help you solve. All right. Are you ready for a brain break, boys and girls? All right. There's our brain break, boys and girls. You ready? All right. First. I want to know if you can, can you cackle like a witch for me? Hmm. 
Can you cackle like a witch? Try one more time. Did we get a good cackle there, boys and girls? I heard some good cackles here. All right. Now, I want to see, boys and girls. Let's move around a little bit. Can you float like a ghost for me? Let's try it again. Do a good job floating. You got a blanket? Let's try one more time. Throw a blanket on you real quick. Let's try it in three, two, one. Ready? All right. Good job floating there, boys and girls. Now, this could get all the dogs in my neighborhood going. Let's howl like a werewolf. Let's pretend it's a full moon, like it will be on Halloween. Ready? <sighs> Got your lungs ready? Do we get it? You want to try that one again? Let's howl again. Oh. All right, that was some pretty good howling. All right, last one here. Let's get up and move and let's see you walk like a zombie. He's looking for some brain tea. Let's keep walking like a zombie. All right, let's go ahead and stretch our All right, let's use our brains, boys and girls, and let's continue working here on our um, comparing of fractions. Ready? Okay. So here, boys and girls, I have two representations of our two holes, okay? And I want to compare them. What is my fraction and we're just going to look at boys and girls the pieces that are shaded the fraction shaded of each hole okay so if i look at the very first shape my green one blue green one okay what fraction is shaded there boys and girls you're right it is one six is shaded right and let's look at my purple, pink, whatever color you want to call it, violet, if you want to get fancy, okay? Boys and girls, what fraction is shaded of my second shape, my second hole? You are exactly right if you told me five, six. Now, boys and girls, what do we notice about these two fractions here? Oh, you're right. They have the same what? The same denominator. Great job, boys and girls. So what does that mean? Now what? What do I do now? You're exactly right, boys and girls. If we are comparing two fractions that have the same denominator, I know that the unit fraction is going to be the same, right? Right, because each piece is going to be the same size in both shapes, isn't it? Yeah, look at the pieces. Look at this square right here and compare it with this, well, not square, it's a rectangle. And this piece, how about that, right here, boys and girls, do they look the same size? They do, because they're both what? They're both equivalent to one thing. They're both the same, okay? So when our pieces are the same size, now I just compare what? My numerators. You're right. I just compare the numerators. So is one piece more or less than five pieces? What should I put here? Go ahead and open up if you think it should be greater than, less than, or equal to. Show me. What do you think? You're right, boys and girls. It is less than. Obviously, one piece is less than five pieces okay and we can look at it here we can tell there's more purple shaded than what there is that blue green color right good all right 
Let's look here, boys and girls. Here our mummy has two eights and seven eights. And he wants to compare, ooh, boys and girls, something got me out here freaky. And he wants to compare them, okay? So what can he use to compare them? You're exactly right. He has to compare the numerators, boys and girls. Great job. Why is that? You're right, because our denominators are the same. So this time, let's use a number line. Well, let's start with pieces first, okay? So I know that each hole is divided into eight pieces, right? Okay. So now we're comparing two pieces shaded to seven pieces shaded, right? Or also, boys and girls, I could have used my number line, okay? And remember the one that the further we go on our number line from zero to one, the bigger the fraction gets the more pieces we have, right? So when we look here on the number line, which is bigger, two eighths or seven eighths? You're right, seven eighths is closer to one whole, right? It's right next to one whole, isn't it? Eight eighths is equivalent to one whole. We can tell that two pieces are less than seven pieces, right? Or two eighths is less than seven eighths. Notice, boys and girls, on the number line, I can use the same one, can't I? Right, because it's eight pieces. So obviously, two pieces would be more than seven, or sorry, less than, less than, less than, less than seven. Okay, so two eighths is less than seven eighths, All right? Now, boys and girls, we have a battle here, okay? We have, our werewolf and our ghost, all right? And they are fighting over, let me move this over, boys and girls, so make sure you can see this, okay? And they are fighting over which is bigger, okay? So my werewolf is saying that four eighths is bigger, and the ghost is saying that four six are bigger. So let's look at those two fractions first, boys and girls. What do we notice about these two fractions? You're right, they have the same numerator this time, right? But our denominators are what? You're right, our denominators are different, okay? So how could I figure this out? What was the strategy we talked about the other day when we're comparing fractions with the same numerator? Do you remember from yesterday? Remember when all everybody kept coming in my room? And so the more people you have and divide that hole into, the smaller your pieces get. So when we compare fractions with the same numerator, it's opposite of what you would think. The denominator that is smaller is what? Well, let's look right here. This first one, this pink one, purple, violet, whatever you want to call it, okay? What do you notice about our piece sizes? This one's divided into how many pieces? You're right, eight. This one's divided into how many pieces? You're right, six. Hmm. So, boys and girls, if you think the werewolf is right, and four eighths is greater than four six. I want you to howl like a werewolf. If you think my ghost is right, I want you to make the ghost sound. Woo -hoo, sound like a ghost if four six is bigger than four eight. What do you think, boys and girls? Well, if I look here, the pieces for the six are what? It's bigger, isn't it? Because it's dividing that hole between less people. Okay? So what should we be doing, boys and girls? You're exactly right. We should be making that ghost sound. Right? Okay. Let's try this one. Oh, look. We got another fight going on, boys and girls. The witch 
says that 2 6 is bigger than 2 7. My vampire begs to differ. My vampire says that 2 7 is bigger. So, boys and girls, what do we notice about these two? You're right, the numerator is the same, right? So can we compare numerators? Nope. But what happens when we compare denominators now? Now we have to drop it down low and look at those denominators, right? Okay, so what do we know? Which says the one with six pieces, two of six pieces, is bigger than the, the vampire's two of seven? What do we know about the denominator? You're right, the smaller the denominator, the bigger the unit fraction, the bigger the piece size. Okay, so let's draw a model for this one. Let's do a number line, okay? So here is our number line comparing two six to two seven. Okay, if you think the witch is right, I want you to cackle again, <laughs> like the witch. And if you think the vampire's right, I want you to make some chomping sounds like you're biting like a vampire. What do you think, boys and girls? Who's right, the witch or the vampire? Are we cackling or biting? You should be. All right, boys and girls, we should be cackling because we know the closer on the bigger the fraction. You are exactly right, boys and girls. Well, that concludes our fraction finale. I hope you boys and girls have a wonderful Halloween. Be safe. Hope you get lots of candy. Remember to brush those teeth, all right? And I will see you back here after Halloween, and you can tell me all about it. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.